Special thanks to Patreon supporter Ghost of Shishima for making this tutorial possible. Hello ladies and gentlemen, scared to if we're here bringing you another Minecraft Modern Warfare aircraft tutorial. In this tutorial, we'll be going ahead and building the McDonnell Douglas AV-8B Harrier 2. The AV-8B Harrier 2 is a single engine ground attack aircraft that constitutes the second generation of Harrier jump jet family, capable of vertical or short takeoff and landing. The, vehicle, the aircraft is primarily employed on light attack or multi-role missions, ranging from close air support of ground troops to armed reconnaissance. The AVAP is used by the United States Marine Corps, the Spanish Navy, and the Italian Navy. A variant of the AVAP, the Brito British Aerospace Harrier II, was developed for the British military, while another, the TAV-8B, is, is a dedicated two-seat trainer. The project that eventually led to the AVAP's creation started in early 1970s as a cooperative effort between the United States and the United Kingdom, aimed at addressing the operational inadequacies of the first-generation Hawker Sidley Harrier. Early efforts centered on a larger, more powerful Pegasus engine to dramatically improve the capabilities of the Harrier. Because of budgetary constraints, the UK abandoned the project in 1975. Following the UK's withdrawal, McDonnell Douglas extensively redesigned the earlier AV, AV, AP, or sorry, 8A Harrier to create the AVAB, while retaining the general layout of its predecessor. The aircraft incorporates a new, larger composite wing with an additional hardpoint on each side an elevated cockpit, a redesigned fuselage, and other structural and aerodynamic refinements. The aircraft is powered by an upgraded version of the Pegasus. The AVAB made its maiden flight in November 1981 and entered service with the USMC in January 1985. Later upgrades added a night attack capability and radar, resulting in the AVAB NA and the AVAB Harrier II Plus versions, respectively. An enlarged version named the Harrier 3 was also studied but not pursued. The UK, through the British Aerospace, rejoined an improved Harrier project as a partner in 1981, giving it a significant work share in the project. Following cooperative mergers in the 1990s, uh, Boeing and Bay Systems have jointly supported the program. Approximately 340 aircraft were produced in a 22-year production program that ended in 2003. Typically operated from small aircraft carriers, large amphibious assault ships, and simple forward operating bases, the AVAPs have participated in numerous military and humanitarian projects, proved themselves versatile assets. U.S. Army General Norman uh, Skrotskov named the USMC Harrier II as one of the several important weapons in the Gulf War. It has also served in operation during freedom in Afghanistan since 2001, the Iraq War since 2003, and was used in Operation Odyssey Dawn in Libya in 2011. Italian and Spanish Harrier IIs have taken part in overseas conflicts in conjunction with NATO coalitions. During its service history, the AVAB has had a high accident rate related to the percentage of time spent in critical takeoff and landing phases. USMC and Italian Navy AVABs are being replaced by the Lockheed Martin F-35B Lightning II, with former expected to operate its Harriers until 2025. So yeah, the um, AVAB Harrier II here, um, kind of a huge stepping stone in the VTOL world. As I mentioned, this is being replaced by the F-35B, which has already started to see widespread service in um, the role that the Harrier once held, and the Harrier here should be retired with... Or basically completely retired within the next um, couple of years. So uh, kind of sad to see the Harrier go because it's just, just a beautiful aircraft and very iconic um, for its role. Really kind of like the main first, you know, put into action, um, I would say VTOL type aircraft. So uh, really sad to go see it go, but again, completely understandable as it uh, is definitely a very outdated airframe and the F-35 just has so much more capability compared to that of the Harrier. Before we go move into taking a look at the aircraft, I do want to go ahead and give a special links to Patreon supporter uh, Ghost of Tsushima for making this tutorial possible. If you guys are interested in supporting the channel where you already do, feel free to check out my Patreon page. Link is always in my video descriptions where you can go and put a small amount to the channel every month. And in doing so, earn a vehicle request you're choosing. It really helps support the work I do on my channel. It's really greatly appreciated. So definitely feel free to check that out. Again, link will always be in my video descriptions. With that though, let's go and dive in here to take a look at the AV-8B Harrier 2. So we do have a landed and in-flight version for you guys available in this tutorial. So obviously the in-flight version here without the landing gear and the landed version here with the landing gear. So those two will be present throughout the uh, or, uh, for the tutorial. So you can pick and choose how you want to position this. Uh, but basically starting off at the front here, we have the front nose here. Um, all the little decals, markings and stuff like that. The cockpit located right there. We then have the giant intakes on both sides of the Harrier. And you can actually see into the back there you have the blade for the... 
the fan blades for the um, the engines themselves. So pretty cool a uh, little design there for that. Then uh, continuing down to the sides, we have the pylons on the bottom there. We also have pylons on the wings. This one here is equipped with some bombs on our inner pylons as well as some rockets and then uh, most likely some air-to-air -air missiles located on the sides of AM9s um, on both uh, wings there. Same loadout. Uh, we have the U.S. National Star Insignia flag there on the side. Pretty simple. Very little design there. Um, the top here does have a little bit of a gray in it, which seemed to be somewhat of a theme with uh, some of the hairier paint jobs I was able to see or find. And so I went ahead and did that on the top there because I think it looks nice. And coming to the tail, we have the vertical and horizontal stabilizers. Nothing too fancy for that. We also have the detail inside here with the jets that would be able to be uh, turned to face downwards to provide that lift and give it the ability to uh, take off from a um, ground position without actually having to move forward. So uh, overall, pretty nice looking aircraft. Um, really happy the way it came out and will make an awesome addition to any of your modern um, to late Cold War conflicts as a, um, you know, beautiful um, VTOL type aircraft. Anyway, so let's go and move into the tutorial by beginning with our first layer, layer number one. All right, guys, so moving into our first layer here, we're going to go ahead and actually start with layer two. Now, we're starting with layer two because it gives us a better basis to kind of build off of and will overall make it a little bit easier to go ahead and add layer one on, which is basically just adding some stuff onto the bottom of the fuselage. A few things I want to mention real quick is if you're completely new to my aircraft tutorials, the way I like to charge these tutorials, I like to do half on camera, half off. What this means is that we're building the entire centerline of the aircraft in the entire right side. It'll be up to you guys to take the right side and copy it across that centerline over to the left side. And once you have that basically complete, you'll be able to move up to the next layer. Pretty uh, simple, and the aircraft is completely symmetrical, so whatever we do on one side will be done on the other. So there is not going to be any differences or any um, problems that should arise. Um, in addition, if you do want to build the landed version of the aircraft, we will be doing that at the end as a modification. So we will be building the aircraft in the in-flight configuration and then going back at the end and adding the landing gear on as a modification to the aircraft. So again, just keep that in mind. If you are wanting to build the landed version, we will be coming back to that a little bit later. With that in mind, though, I want to go ahead and mention that to make sure that we position this aircraft correctly to ensure that it sits properly on the ground level. Now this layer here, layer 2, is going to be a total of two blocks up from the ground level. You can see we have two blocks of full space between our ground level and the um, layer 2 here. So very important to make sure that's correct. If anything is, if it's too high or too low, uh, it's going to obviously throw the whole entire build off if you go back to the landing version. Obviously if you're building the in-flight version, it doesn't really matter. Just know that, that, that you need to have enough space um, to make sure that it's running to the height level. Anyways though, let's get started. First thing we want to do is we're going to go ahead and place down a row of three of stone full blocks. After that row of three of stone full blocks, going toward the front here, if you're on Java, we're going to place down two upside down pistons like so. If you're not on Java, I'd recommend a stone full block and a stone top slab. We'll be coming back to those pistons a little bit later for my Java players, so just keep that in mind, and we're just going to leave the pistons as is for right now. Coming off that uh, last piston there, or that stone top slab, we're going to place down a stone top slab here, and then an iron trap door like that for the side there. Going back the other way, after our stone blocks, we're going to place down an iron bar. A black concrete block, then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine stone blocks back. We're gonna go ahead and place down two upside down pistons. Again, right here, a good alternative would be to place down a stone full block and then a stone top slab as we did for the front for an alternative. After those pistons, we're gonna place down two stone top slabs, then two stone full blocks, and then a stone upside down stair, and that right there is gonna make it the center line there of the aircraft. With that complete, we're going to go ahead and start working our way to the sides here. We're going to begin with by going ahead and digging skeleton skulls. We're going to place down two skeleton skulls on the sides of those pistons, and then one, two, three, and the side walls back. Iron bar, black concrete, then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven um, stone blocks back, and then two stone upside down stairs, and then two skeleton skulls on those two pistons. After that, going to the sides here, we're going to place down an iron trapdoor that will be coming off this first inside wall here. Then a second iron trap door back from that, as well as a skeleton skull coming off that um, iron bar there. And then we want to place down a narrow black concrete block. Then we're going to place down a stone or a row of two stone full blocks. So we're going to go and do one, two, and then a stone upside down stair. And then we're going to go and grab our uh, like we stainless panes, place down two back. Then a iron trap door. And after that iron trap door, we're going to then place down a polished anisite top slab, like so. After that's done, our next row to the side here is going to be a quartz upside down stair. So smooth quartz like that. And then we're going to go back from that with one, two, and three stone upside down stairs. 
We then want to take our light gray stained glass panes and then go ahead and place down one and two glass stained panes there along the side. After that, we're going to go ahead and place down a polished anti top slab after that last glass pane. Now, coming off this last glass pane as well, we're going to go ahead and place down a birchwood fence gate and have it opened up toward that glass pane, like so. After we have that done uh, for our kind of first pylon here, uh, what we want to do here is we're going to go and go off of this glass pane right here. We're going to go ahead and build three blocks out to the side, and we're going to, or sorry, two blocks to the side. So for me, I'll just use some different colors just so that we can tell it apart here. So preferably some yellow or whatever. Um, doesn't really matter. Just these blocks will be new later. We're going to go off this glass pane one and two blocks, and we're going to then place down a mossy cobblestone wall. After that wall, uh, we then want to go and grab ourselves a zombie head, and we're going to place down a zombie head right here. And then going back from that, we're going to place down another mossy cobblestone sl slab there with a dark oak wood sign to both sides of that slab. We're going to go and then place down a dark oak wood fence gate. That'll be right here. Come off this slab, and this will be opened up toward the back. And then a dark oak wood sign on both sides here again of that fence gate. We're going to then place down there a mossy cobblestone wall here. And this is going to have a zombie head there on the end, and that's going to do it for our kind of beginning uh, little pylon stage there. Then at this point, we're going to go and build two blocks coming off, or one block coming off that fence gate. So it's going to be one block over, and then we're going to place down a green terracotta block like so. So you should have basically a two block of space between this fence gate and this green terracotta block. We're going to go and then go back from this green terracotta block a total of one and two more. So you have a total of three, a zombie head, and we're going to go then place down a oak wood trap door here on the front close like that for our rocket pod on the wing. At this point here, we're going to go and grab ourselves a polished blackstone top slab, a wither skeleton skull, a dark oak wood fence gate, a birchwood fence gate, a quartz stair, and also a birchwood sign. We'll also need a item frame and some black concrete for our uh, missile here on the side. This missile here, pretty simple. We're going to place down a polished blackstone top slab coming off that green terracotta block. A wither skeleton skull coming off the front. A dark oak fence gate there at the side of the slab. We're going to go then place down two birchwood fence gates back. Then a quartz upside down stair. On the back here, we're going to place down an item frame. A black concrete block in the item frame. And if you're on Java, we can place a birchwood sign on the side there of that block as well. If you're on Java, or sorry, if you're on a different version other than Java, you will not be able to place down an item frame and sign in the same block space. If that's the case, just go ahead and place down the item frame and disregard the sign. Then to the side of the stair, we're going to place down an air fence gate opened up toward it and an air birch would sign like so. And there, there will basically complete our uh, missiles there and our loadouts there for the aircraft. Taking a look at it from above here, this is what we should have for the top down view of layer 2 complete. And at this point in time, we're going to be going ahead and now moving into our next layer of the aircraft, which will be going ahead and taking us downwards, going ahead and moving into layer number 1. Alright guys, moving into our next layer, we have layer 1. For layer 1, what we're going to do is we're going to start off by going ahead and going to the bottom of the aircraft here. We're going to go and go back from this these two stone full blocks we're going to go to the third one here we're going to place down the iron trap door followed by a second third fourth and fifth one so you have a total of five there on the bottom we're going to go then place down a stone slab for us java players we'll place down two upside down pistons like so an air stone slab and then an iron trap door like that a good alternative to those pistons really isn't there really isn't really one that's perfect uh, to get the shape exactly but you can go ahead and use some stone full blocks instead of the pistons there if you're on a different version after that, though, we're going to take our stone brick walls. We're going to go to the side here of this third iron trap door. We're going to place down one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven stone brick walls there along the side. After that, we're going to go and take iron trap doors, and we're going to place down an iron trap door coming off the side here of this, or sorry, coming off of this one down here, and we're going to place down a second one back so you have two coming off that stone brick wall there. Then to the side, we're going to place down two more iron trap doors coming off those two, then one iron trap door toward the front. And we're going to go then place down one more toward the back here underneath that black concrete block. We then want to go ahead and grab ourselves a end rod. And we're going to place down an end rod, which will be coming off the stone block right here, facing downwards like that. After we have that all done there, we want to go and then take our item frames. We're going to place down item frames on the side here of this stone stair and on the bottom here. And in those item frames, we're going to place down black concrete like so. And that will be done on both sides there. After that is all done right there, that is going to pretty much conclude everything for layer 1. Just trying to double check, make sure we're not missing anything, and everything does appear to be good. At this point in time, for my Java players, we're going to go ahead and type in a command, which will be slash give space at p space minecraft colon debug underscore stick. By pressing tab, it should autofill. We get slash give at p minecraft colon debug underscore, underscore stick. Pressing enter will give us our stick here, and we can go ahead and then go to these pistons on the bottom, and we'll right-click them like that to go ahead and get rid of that wood portion there. We're not going to touch these pistons just yet, because if we do, um, 
basically do that when we update the block above them it will turn that piston back into the normal state so we're just going to go ahead and leave those alone for right now we'll come back to them after the next layer is complete anyways though that right there is going to conclude layer number um one and with that let's move on to layer number three Moving into our next layer, we have layer number three. For layer three to begin with, we're going to place down a stone block on top of this iron trap door in the front, followed by a andesite wall, a skeleton skull, and then two end rods coming off the skeleton skull like that going forward. After that, we're going to go back from this stone block with a second one. So you have two stone blocks. Then we're going to go ahead and place down five black concrete blocks. If you do want to leave the interior open to basically do an interior, um, you can go ahead and instead of doing the black concrete, leave that space open. But we don't have much room to work with, so we're just going to go ahead and close this off with black concrete. We're going to go ahead and place down a polished andesite block, and then after that polished andesite block, we're going to place down a row of stone going all the way down the length of the fuselage here, but with a total of 17 blocks down the side there. After that's done, going back up to the front, we're going to grab ourselves some, like, race thing, or sorry, first some dark oak with signs. We're going to place down a dark oak with sign on both sides of that andesite wall, two light race thing with panes back, then two andesite walls, a diorite wall, and then two more andesite walls, and then a polished andesite block. We're going to go ahead and then take our stone blocks, go back one, two, three, four, five, six, seven stone blocks, followed by gray concrete, then two stone brick walls, then one, two, three, and four andesite walls, two light gray stained glass panes, and an iron trap door on the end here. Again, if you're on Java, we'll left click the iron trap door until we get selected open, false, we'll right click it and it should set it to open to true and lay, it should lay flat against the side of that stone block. If you are on a different version and do not have access to that capability, you can go ahead and instead use a birch wood or dark oak wood trap door, whichever you prefer on the back there just to help kind of give it that extra width there on the tail. After that though, we're going to go ahead and then build out two blocks to, from the glass pane. So one, two blocks. We're going to go ahead and place down two iron trap doors and then a stone top slab. That'll be coming off the side here, the iron trap door closest to the rear. We can go ahead and then delete these two um, blocks there that we used to build out to the sides. And that right there is what you should have for the um, horizontal stabilizers. With that done, uh, we want to go ahead and then place down a iron bar to the side of this polished nanosite block. Then a black concrete block back. A stone block. And then we're going to place down a gray concrete block. One, two, three stone blocks. Then a polished nanosite block. And then we're going to then place down a polished nanosite stair, which will be like so on the side there. Then coming off the front here of the stair, we're gonna place down an iron trap door. And again, we'll basically use our um, debug stick here to go ahead and um, set that polished inside or that iron trap door flat against the stair. Again, all good alternative, whatever you used back there, birch wood or dark oak wood, you can use that trap door there. We're also gonna place down an item frame on the side of the stair. And in that item frame, we wanna go ahead and place down a black stained glass pane like so. Go ahead and continuing on. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and go to the sides here. We're gonna place down a stone block come off this black concrete block and we're gonna go then grab ourselves a dark oak trap door and place it here against that stone block going back from that stone block we're gonna place down a second one then followed up with an andesite wall and then we're gonna place down a polished andesite full block after this andesite wall we're gonna place down our item frame and like we did before we're gonna place down a black stained glass pane coming off the or in the item frame like so as well as an iron trap door on the side of this stone block. And again, using our debug stick here, we'll go ahead and right click it like so and set it like that. And again, birch wood or dark oak wood is a good alternative. Now this section here, we're also gonna place down two iron trap doors. And again, we're gonna use our debug stick here, right click them like so. And then we're gonna place down three iron trap doors on the back here, which will be using the same technique of right clicking like that to go ahead and lay them flat. Again, uh, there are the alternatives, alternatives I listed before can be used right here. At this point here, we're going to place down three item frames along the side of the aircraft. And we're going to go then place down a fire charge, or sorry, fireworks star in the middle one. We're going to come back to those two item frames there a little bit later. Um, with that done, we pretty much have the fuselage complete. And we're going to go and start working on our pylons here. For our pylons, we're going to go and take our stone brick walls. And we're going to place down one on top of uh, basically each one of these cobblestone slabs and that dark oak fence gate and then on top of this zombie head here toward the front we're gonna place down one more polished black stone stair like so now to the sides here we're gonna place down one two three and four mostly cobblestone slabs and one two three and four we then want to go ahead and take our zombie heads we're gonna place down zombie heads on both ends like so and this right here will kind of complete that um bomb um i guess bombs on the pylons there Anyways, after that, uh, we're going to go then grab ourselves iron trap doors, and we're going to go off of the the last two, um, mostly cobblestone balls with two iron trap doors like that. And then going back from that, we want to go and place down two, or sorry, three stone top slabs. So one, two, and three. And on the end here, we're going to place down a skeleton skull. 
as well as on the inside here, two birchwood signs on the side of those two top slabs, and then we're going to place down one birchwood sign on the top slab facing toward the outside. After that's uh, done there, uh, we're going to then place down a stone top slab and then a row of three of stone upside down stairs. So it's going to be a stone top slab here. And we want to go and then take our stone stairs and we're going to place down a row of, we'll, we'll probably just go and do a row two here, probably better. So one, two, and then we're going to place down a stone top slab going back like so. Next row to the side here uh, will be a row of two stone stairs. So we're going to place down a stone up stone stair here, second one back, and an air stone top slab after that stair there. And then on the end here of those two stairs, we're going to place down uh, two stone top slab, or stone top slab coming off that stair, and then one right there, like so there for the wings. And after we have that all done there, that is going to basically wrap up that. Uh, one last minor detail here is going to be the addition of a redstone repeater on top of this polished black stone top slab, which should be oriented like so. Anyways, you'll take that same design, copy it over to the other side, and this is what we should have for the top down view with layer 3 complete. As you can see, we're really starting to get the shape of the Harrier coming together. Uh, but with layer 3 complete, that right there is going to include that. Let's move on to layer number 4. Before we go moving to layer 4, I do want to go ahead and real quickly mention the uh, little banners there that I was talking about making um, and coming back to you for those item frames. To uh, make them really simple, we're going to go into a loom. We're going to need a light gray banner, two gray dye, and one light gray dye. We're going to place down our light gray banner and our gray dye in the, in the um, dye slot. We're going to go and select the line on the left side there with gray dye and the line vertically on the right side. So you get basically this three striped banner. We'll place it back into our loom and our light gray dye, and we'll go ahead and select the light gray border that's going to go around the banner like so. Both these banners we have, or for this banner, we're going to go and then place it down in each of these item frames, and we're going to go ahead and rotate the item frame or the banner in the item frame until it basically faces toward that uh, firework star. And that right there will create the national star insignia that will be on both sides there of the aircraft. So just kind of a cool little um, way to, uh, to do that. Anyways, though, that right there is going to conclude uh, that, and with that, we'll move up to layer number four. Moving into our next layer, we have layer number four. For layer four to begin with, we're going to go and place down a uh, daylight detector on top of the stone block. We're going to go and turn it to the night mode, followed by a stone slab back, then one, two, three, four black stained glass blocks, and then a black concrete block like that on the end. We're going to go then place down an iron bar, then a row of um, gray concrete that's going to go back a total of 13 blocks, and then one, two, three, four, and five stone blocks back an inside wall on the end here, and then a skeleton skull like that on the very end. After that's done, go ahead and move into, back up to our front. We're going to start working our way out to the side here. There is going to be one difference. On the left side here of the stone slab, we're going to place down a birchwood fence gate and open it up toward it. Over here on the other side, the right side, we're going to place down a skeleton skull at a slight angle like so. So there will be that one difference there located at the front there nose of the aircraft. At this point also, we're going to place down a wither skeleton skull at the side of this glass block, as well as a black stained glass pane here. We then want to place down a stone stair here, and then going back from that stone stair, we're going to place down two andesite walls, the iron bar, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten gray concrete blocks back, and then one, two, three uh, gray stained glass panes, a light gray stained glass pane, and then one and two stone stairs, followed by a stone slab, and then we're going to place down a dark oak wood sign on the side here of this fence gate, or on the that side of that wall there. After that, we're going to go ahead and place down a daylight detector coming off this forward stair, turn that to night mode, and then we're going to place down two stone slabs back from that, then two daylight detectors here, again turn to night mode, then two iron trap doors on top of those two for the horizontal stabilizers. Moving back into our um, fuselage, we're going to go ahead and place down two iron trap doors coming off those two andesite blocks, and we're going to then place down a skeleton skull coming off this side of that iron bar there. We then want to place down a black concrete block here, then a stone block, and then one, two, three, four, five, and six gray concrete blocks back, followed by a polished black stone slab. Next row here is going to be a quartz stair, which will be on top of this iron trap door. So, like this. And then going back from it, we're going to place down two stone stairs. So, we're going to go back one and two stone stairs, and actually, sorry, three in total. We'll go ahead and grab our item frames. We're going to place down item frames around the side here of this stone stair. So that will just be placed around the two sides, the side facing to the side, and obviously the side on top. And then we're going to place down a light gray stained glass pane in this section right here. Then going back from that, we're going to place down a row of polished black stone top slabs. So we're going to go ahead, we'll, we'll place down one and two polished black stone top slabs and two gray concrete blocks. And then we're going to place down two pistons. So one and two 
like so, and then a polished blackstone slab there on the end. After that, we're going to place down a nair stone slab up in the front here. So we're going to place down one coming off this slab here. We're going to go ahead and go back with three pistons. And then one and two polished blackstone slabs. Again, a good alternative to those pistons will probably be using some slabs. Um, so yeah, and then continuing on, we're going to then place down a stone slab coming off this piston here. Then a row of one, two, three polished blackstone slabs. Then after that, we're going to go ahead and place down a daylight detector, which will be turned to night mode. Next row is going to be a stone slab coming off this polished blackstone slab here. Then a polished blackstone slab going back. Two daylight detectors turn to night mode and then we're going to go and then place down an iron trap door on the end here next row is going to be two daylight detectors here again we'll turn these to night mode and we're going to go then place down three iron trap doors back next row is going to be a dark oak wood trap door right here and then we're going to place down one and two iron trap door or sorry one iron trap door back and then we're going to place down one iron trap door come off that one there to the side at this point in time, we'll go ahead and grab our debug stick, so for us Java players, and we'll go ahead and right click those pistons to go ahead and set them down like so. Also, in addition, I forgot to, from the previous layers, uh, go to these pistons here and also right click them to go ahead and set them down to that depth there. One thing I would also like to cover is we can go ahead and go to these glass panes and we can actually change the properties, the facings of them to kind of fill these areas a little bit better. This first one here, we'll go ahead and kind of change the direction here of the glass pane so it connects up to that polished blackstone top slab and stair there. It just helps fill that space in better. Same thing can be done right here with this glass pane uh, basically being altered to face forward toward this stair like that. And it just kind of helps improve the overall look there of the aircraft. And the same thing for here for this glass pane on the back. We'll do the same thing extended toward that stair. And it just kind of helps flow the aircraft a little bit better and all that stuff. It's just a nice little technique to use, especially for our Java players and the debug stick. Anyways, though, that is going to conclude layer number four for the build. And with that, let's move on to layer number five. And moving up to our next layer, we have layer five. One thing I also want to do from layer four here is uh, we have this glass pane right here. We can also use the same techniques that we used with the debug stick. So again, for my Java players, we can extend the two sides there to kind of connect to the stair and that wither skeleton skull to help fill that area in a little bit better. Anyway, so um, let's go ahead and get started here with this layer five. For layer five, we're gonna go ahead and go to the second black stained glass block. We're gonna place down one block on top of that, followed by one, two, and three back. So you have a total of four there, like that. We're gonna go then place down a stone brick slab on top of that iron bar. Two daylight detectors turned to night mode, a polished blackstone stair like so, two polished blackstone slabs on the back, two daylight detectors turned to night mode, two dark oak wood trap doors, we're going to go and skip a space of two, another daylight detector turned to night mode, a polished blackstone slab, three stone blocks, and then a black concrete block here on the very end. Once we have uh, that done there, we're going to go ahead and also grab ourselves some birch wood buttons and we're going to place them down on the sides here of these two stone blocks for the tail. Going to the front, we're going to place down a light gray stained glass pane coming off this block here. And then we're going to go ahead and go back from it. One, two, and three black um, black uh, stained glass panes like that. We're going to go and then place down a uh, daylight detector to both sides like so, which will be turned to night mode. Just like that. And then going back from that, we're going to place down a additional one, two, three, four, five, and six daylight detectors. So you have a total of seven here along the side of the aircraft. We're going to go and then place down one and two dark oak wood trap doors after that. Again, working our way out to the sides here, we're going to place down an iron trap door on top of this one, a skeleton skull on top of that stair there, and then going back from that, we're going to place down one and two iron trap doors, followed by will be one, two, three, four, five dark oak wood trap doors, and then taking our gray carpet, we're just going to place down two gray carpet on top of those two polished blackstone top slabs. With that all complete right there, that is going to wrap up what we have there for layer number five. And with that, we'll be going ahead and moving into our next uh, layers, our final layers of the build. All right, guys, so moving into our final layers of the build, we're going to be going ahead and moving into layers six through nine. For these layers here to go ahead and get started with, we're going to place down an air brick slab on top of the second black stained glass block, followed by a daylight detector behind it, which will be turned to night mode, like so, to go ahead and make our front cockpit. With that done, we're going to go ahead and go to our vertical stabilizer here. We're going to place down a stone stair on top of the stone block here. Then a gray concrete block behind it and a black concrete block like so going up. We're going to place down a stone block on top of that gray concrete block and then another um, black concrete block going up here on the rear. After we have uh, that all done there, we're going to then place down a stone block on the very top here. And then a iron trap door coming off that going forward. We're also going to place down a light gray stainless pane coming off that stone block there toward the front like that for the vertical stabilizer. With that all complete right there, that is going to complete the in-flight version of the 
of AV AB Harrier. And at this point in time, we're going to be going ahead and now moving into the landed version of the aircraft. So at this point in time, uh, we'll be adding a landing gear on, uh, but with that, the in-flight version of the aircraft is complete at this point. Um, so with that, let's move on to the landing gear and how to add that on to our model. All right, guys, so moving into our landing gear. Our landing gear here, we're going to be going ahead and going to the bottom here of the front. We're going to go to this second stone block from the front. We're going to delete that stone block and also this iron trap door and stone block right behind it. In this place, we're going to place down a stone upside down stair here and then a stone slab like that in front of the stair. We're going to go and drop down from the stair with a, um, well, we're actually going to go ahead and skip a, skip a block. And we're gonna place down a block of coal like this, and then one back. So it looks like that. We're gonna go then place down a lever coming off this block, and then underneath this stair, we're gonna place down an anvil like so. Coming off the anvil, we're gonna place down an item frame toward the front, and then a snowball in the item frame like that to go ahead and create a little light there. We then have this banner here, which is a white banner, a black border, and a black horizontal stripe there for the center. This banner here will be placed on both sides of this forward wheel to go ahead and give that impression of um, the, um, it will kind of look a little bit more detailed. And with that all done, that right there is it for the forward landing gear, and we'll go ahead and move to our sides. Our side landing gear is super simple. We're going to go ahead and go to the wings here. We're going to go ahead and go to this second from last stone slab here. We're going to go ahead and replace this with a stone upside down stair. And then we're going to place down a birchwood sign there on the side of that stair again. We're going to go ahead and place down two end rods going down like so, and then a wither skeleton skull on the block here on the bottom of that end rod like that. This same design will be carried over to the other side and will be placed on both sides like so. With all done, that's it for our side landing gear. And lastly, we'll be going ahead and moving on to our back landing gear. This uh, will involve going ahead and going to this section here. We're going to go forward to the piston. We're going to delete these two stone blocks right here. We're going to go then place down a row or a column of two direct walls going down and then a quartz slab, top slab in that section there. We're going to place down a quartz top slab on the bottom of that direct um, wall and then a polished black stone upside down stair, a stair on top of it and two stairs on the back. Same thing will be done over here on this side as well. Then we can take our debug stick for our Java players and recorrect those pistons as they will um, revert back to their normal state um, after doing that. Then at this point in time, we'll be going to go ahead and make the banners that will be on the sides of those wheels. To make these banners super simple, we're going to need a loom, two black banners, two white die, and four black die. We're going to place down our loom, go into our loom with our black banners and our white die. We're going to go ahead and for each of these banners, one is going to have a line of white die on the left side, and the other banner is going to have a line of white die on the right side. Both these banners will be placed into our loom with our black die. We're going to do a line across the top of black die and line across the bottom to go ahead and form this C shape. And same thing will be done for this banner here, like so. With both these banners complete, we're going to place them on the side here, these two polished black stone stairs with the white facing toward each other to go ahead and give a little bit more detail there to the wheels there on the back. And once we have that all complete there, that is going to wrap up the landing gear here for the Harrier 2. And with that, that is going to conclude my tutorial here for the AV-8B Harrier 2. Hopefully you guys do enjoy this aircraft and are able to put it to good use. If you do end up using this aircraft, I do ask that you guys give me proper credit for it. This being link from a sound of build to my channel or this video if this does appear in your social media sites. And as long as you guys give me credit for your freezing for our projects you guys are working on. Uh, with that though, thing, being, again, a big special thanks to Patreon supporter Ghost of Tsushima for making this tutorial possible. And as always, feel free to check out my Patreon page. Link is always in my video descriptions. With that though, thank you guys again so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This has been Gary 204 and I'll see you guys next time.